Now we're going to talk about the endocrine system. The endocrine system helps with regulation and with communication. We rely on two different systems. Ooh, <laughs> bad drawing on my part. Let's try that again. We rely on two systems for regulation. We've talked about the nervous system before, and the other system that helps is the endocrine system. The endocrine system is a system of ductless glands. A duct is nothing more a, than a tube for things to go through. So ductless doesn't have any of those. The endocrine system secretes chemical signals directly into the bloodstream. Usually those chemicals are hormones. Uh, the chemical travels to a target tissue, so maybe it's made in the adrenal glands and acts somewhere in a muscle. Um, it travels to long distances throughout the body. They're slow and long lasting in the response. Obviously, the nervous system is still for control and communication as well. The nervous system is a system of neurons that translates transmits electrical signals rather than chemical signals and it releases neurotransmitters rather than hormones. The nervous system actions are fast and short lasting versus the endocrine system that is slow and long lasting. The nervous system and the endocrine system are obviously linked. For the nervous system we have the hypothalamus. It's the master nerve control center so it's the part of the nervous system that kind of oversees the endocrine system. Just like you have specific parts of the nervous system or specific nerves that are in charge of moving your hand and controlling your hand. Okay, so the hypothalamus is the part of the nervous system that's directly linked and in charge of the endocrine system. It receives information from the nerves around the body and about the internal conditions, and it regulates the release of hormones from the pituitary gland. Now, so the hypothalamus contacts the pituitary gland, and the pituitary gland is the master gland. It's kind of like the main part for the endocrine system, okay, the main part of the endocrine system. It will secrete, being the pituitary gland that is, a broad range of hormones and kind of make sure everything is running ship shape with all the other glands. Here you see the hypothalamus that's part of the nervous system and this whole thing here is the pituitary gland which is endocrine. So regulation, okay, regulation. What that is is homie don't play the, I, I mean homeostasis for any of you in li living color fans. Homeostasis for regulation, it is the reason. What this means is, is we don't grow too tall and we don't grow too short or lack of growth. Um, we're not too hot, we're not too cold. We don't have too much sugar in our blood, we don't have too little sugar in our blood. All of our chemical reactions are running at the proper rate and time and place and space. Homeostasis is when all systems are operating at optimal level. That's when our body's in homeostasis, when all of our systems are running at optimal level. So why are hormones needed? Well, they're chemical messages from one body part to another. They work very, very well because our body recognizes structure and function so often. It's an easy way to communicate because we just release another word or another hormone to get an appropriate reaction to maintain homeostasis. And they can travel long distances. Okay, so again, neurotransmitters are for the neurons in our nervous system and hormones are released by our endocrine system glands. So. The endocrine system primarily works in two ways, negative feedback and positive feedback. Negative feedback is actually probably makes the most sense. It's where a stimulus causes something different to happen. Okay, so let's say um, we have, uh, for ex here's an example of our sugar metabolism. Let's say our sugar is too high. So our blood sugar is too high, that would be the stimulus. So that causes insulin, 
whoops, insulin to be released. Okay, our blood sugar being too high caused insulin being released. So the stimulus, blood sugar high, caused insulin to be released. That's negative feedback, okay, where the stimulus and the response are different. Versus positive feedback. Positive feedback is when we have the stimulus causes more of the same thing to happen. So if the production of estrogen caused more estrogen to be made, that would be a positive feedback example. So let's do this one. Here we have uh, our body temperature is our condition, which is right at 37 degrees. So let's say our body temperature increases and increases and increases. Our hypothalamus is going to send a signal or a message to our nerve signals, specifically uh, the ones that control our blood vessels to dilate, get bigger. What that means is, is it starts relieving heat and sweat through our pores. That's a good thing. So as a result, our body temperature will decrease. So the stimulus was the high temperature. Our response was dilating our blood vessels. That's negative feedback. Here, same thing. If our body temperature is too low, our hypothalamus will tell, send our nerve signals to shiver, but more importantly, constrict our blood vessels, making them get tighter, which means all that heat and warmth stays in our body. So again, we're not losing, we're not losing any heat, okay? We're not losing any heat, we're keeping that heat in because we're closing everything off, which again, raises our body temperature. Again, that's negative feedback. So here's another example. This time it's blood sugar level. Okay, blood sugar level, specifically glucose levels. So here, let's say that we have high levels of glucose. That means our pancreas, yes, you need to know that, our pancreas is going to make insulin. Insulin lowers glucose levels in the blood. Okay, so we have a direct result. Again, that's negative feedback. So you need to know why this is negative feedback, but also that the pancreas releases insulin. Insulin lowers blood glucose levels. Let's take the opposite example. So here, our blood sugar level is too low. Again, our pancreas is going to make glucagon to raise our blood sugar level. Yes, you need to know that the pancreas makes glucagon, and you have to know that glucagon will raise our blood sugar level. Last one here, and this time we're going to go with our blood calcium levels. We need different calcium, or sorry, we need different amounts of calcium at different times. So if our calcium level is too high, okay, as you can see, it's kind of hard to see, but this outline of a person right there is your thyroid. So here's what your thyroid looks like, okay? This little guy right here, it goes kind of around your neck. Your thyroid will release calcitonin. Calcitonin will lower the calcium levels in your blood. It should be pretty easy to remember. Calcitonin lowers calcium in your blood. Next thing, if you notice, there's these little dots on the thyroid. Those little dots on the thyroid are the parathyroid. Parathyroid makes parathyroid hormone, or PTH. For our class purposes, you just need to know it as PTH, okay? And it's made in the parathyroid. So when our calcium levels are too low, our parathyroid will make PTH, and PTH will raise the calcium levels in our blood. Again, both of these examples our negative feedback. So in summary for the endocrine system, the purpose is to maintain homeostasis. Remember homeostasis is where all of our body systems are at optimal level. It's made up of ductless glands, no tubes, everything's secreted. 
It works very, very closely through the nervous system. Again, we have the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland that are in constant communication with one another. We use hormones as signals and can travel through the bloodstream long distances. Can use positive feedback, but mostly uses negative feedback loops. And the couple of questions that you should be able to ask and answer yourself after this should be, what are the hormones that you need to know? All the ones from the last couple of examples. Where are they made? Each one, where is each one made? And then what do they do? And that is all she wrote about the endocrine system. It's like this and like that and like this, Anna. It's like that and like this and like that, Anna. It's like this. So just chill to the next episode.